Hey, what's up guys? My name is Xtac and today is August 14th, 2021. I've been busy with some things in life, so I've been doing some of the events on the last day. So for today's video, I ended up completing all of last week's event, the Thunder Sojourn, uh, and clearing the shop in a day, about two to three hours total. Since this was the first major event since Inazuma was released, which is marked by the fact that it gives out a crown, I was expecting a little more, but I'm not disappointed and I don't want to undermine the amount of work it takes to program the mechanics and develop the art and models. So I thought I'd take a step back and compare it against older events. However, I've only been playing since Kanye's release, so please keep that in mind. The three things we're going to judge events by are funness, engagement, and originality. So let's jump right in. I'm going to go ahead and start at the C tier. I think this is going to be the baseline for events, specifically C is for commissions. So uh, every event in this tier, I believe, is going to be sort of just like doing commissions. So the first one is going to be Mimitomo, we have Bishops and where to find them, Contending Tides, Never Ending Battle, and of course Thunder Soldier, the reason I made this video. So events in this tier are basically just commissions in an event sort of form. You have to go to specific locations for them. You do a one to two minute event there and then you leave and that's all there really is to it. I think this is a sort of baseline for some of the events and they're okay fun because they're just existing Genshin content, but they're not super original and not terribly engaging because of the shortness. Next, I'm going to mention the one and only event I have in the D tier list, and that's going to be Theater Mechanicus. I just feel like this event is sort of out of place for Genshin Impact. It's a tower defense game, which is okay, not really a problem, but when I played it, it felt really repetitive and the characters that you're playing really has nothing to do with the event except for that they can maybe apply a reaction. Next we're going to jump into the B tier which is going to be for Not Bad. These events were sort of filler content and they were somewhat original, somewhat fun, and somewhat engaging but really not the most. So first of all is Misty Dungeon. This was a dungeon crawling event which I think Genshin Impact has a lot of room to improve on. It is something that fits into the genre and the cool thing about this event was you could try characters that you might not necessarily own in different teams. So for example, Albedo and uh, Mona were available for your team. So overall, not a bad event. Next, I'm going to put the Lantern right. This event was mostly about doing commissions, but each commission had a little sort of backstory relating to the Lantern Rite Festival, and it felt very culturally significant. I thought it was pretty engaging, moderately original, and moderately fun. So there's that. Uh, Windbloom Festival, I'm also going to put into the B tier list. I think this event was actually extremely original, but the problem was the engagement, and it was pretty fun. Uh, it, was, it was a bunch of Mario Party-esque uh, mini-games, which I, I recognize takes a lot of programming for each, but the problem is it lacks replayability, right? A lot of the mini-games you played two or three times, and after that they just felt kind of repetitive. Next we have the A tier list, and in this I think uh, what makes these ones really good is that they're really engaging. So I'm going to go ahead and put Saga Bound Sword and Energy Amp. These two events were sort of boss fighting events, and I think the whole model with selecting how difficult your boss is and choosing multiple debuffs and getting points respected to that is a good model. So those are all A tier. I think this is a good way to move forward with boss fighting because it appeals to every sort of player, casual or hardcore. Also in this tier list, I'm going to put Wishful Drops. Uh, the start of this event was a sort of Pokemon-like event where you went around with your water buddy and caught cranes and frogs with your bubble. I thought that was a cool mechanic. And then at the end, you also fought a boss, although less uh, intricate than the other two bossing events. Uh, you could do it in co-op, so I thought Wishful Drops was pretty fun. Also, I want to put in Kaboom Ball as an A- sort of uh, event. I thought for a mini gate type event, it was perfectly timed. It only took me about an hour to finish all of it. Uh, it wasn't too repetitive because you only had to do each one about three times or so to get most of the rewards. And uh, overall for mini games going forward it should be about this size. And finally for the S tier I'm going to go ahead and put Midsummer Adventure. I think this is easily one of the most well thought out events that uh, Mahoyo has ever released. The cutscene where the water level lowers and more islands become revealed I was blown away by and all the islands were pretty fun to explore. and. The lore around each area was very well thought out. There was a quest in each major island block and the whole quest line around Klee was very endearing. It was engaging, fun, and very original. Lastly, Wind Trace is like the ultimate original event. It was hide and seek, but you could transform into objects in the environment. It was PvP, which is pretty uh, novel in this game, so I think that's part of what made it really fun playing against other people. If this event ever came back again, I would totally play it with no rewards. So Wind Trace, I think they could make more player versus player games like this and people would love it. I think it was a great event. Super original, super fun, and super engaging because you have to outplay other players. So that's my tier list. These other two events I was came out this year, but I wasn't around when they uh, were out, so I'm not gonna rate them. After finishing this tier list, it seems to me that some components of a good event in the future are 
PvP, and it doesn't even have to be combat PvP like Wind Trace, uh, player chosen difficulty scaling, and lastly, original mechanics that aren't used for commission like events. Anyways, these are my opinions. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.